Welcome back everybody, this is Funky Money Man, and in today's video we will be going over data types. Now today's video will be fairly short because data types aren't that difficult to understand, and there's not many of them. Now there are two different types of data types. There are primitive data types, which I'll be going over in this video, and non-primitive data types, which I'll be going over one of those. Let's jump into it. Now the first thing we'll be going over is a byte. As you can see, it turned orange there. That means it's a keyword, and we're able to use that. Now we can name it something, small number. It turned dark gray because we aren't using that variable anywhere. And then we can either just stop it here with a semicolon, or we can set that equal to something. So let's set it to the number 100. Now. The first thing you should understand about these data types is they are case sensitive. If I change this to a capital B, it will not work. That is referencing a class. If you don't know what that is, I'll go over that later. But it has to be lowercase b for this to work. Second of all, a byte has a size of one byte, meaning it can only hold up to one byte of data. That goes up from a range of 100, negative 128 to 127. If I try and go to 128, it will get angry at me. So when you're programming in the future, just know what sizes you're working with so that you don't overflow and break and cause an exception and all that stuff. Now, the next variable data type we'll be going over is a short. This one is two bytes. And we can say medium number. And this one is two bytes worth. There are online charts that tell you the size of them. If you are doing generic programming, an int should do what you want. It has up to 2 billion, plenty for what you need. If you need to go higher, you can go to long. That one is 8 bytes. It's insanely big, so you might need it, you might not. Anyways, this one, we can set it to a bigger number, whatever. It's all good. Now, the naming here doesn't really matter. You can set this to whatever you want. I would just suggest that you set it to something that the variable is used for. So if you're making some cookie click or whatever, you'd want to name it income or something like that so that you know what it is. You can't just keep it small number because you might get confused or something. The next data type we'll be going over is an int. This is the one I suggest you use almost all the time. It's the one I use. This one is four bytes. It's very nice. This green squiggly doesn't really mean anything. It just uh, thinks there's a typo. The one after this is a long. Which number? And as you can see, it's a very long number. And then the one after this is a float. Now, there is a jump between these. The byte, short, int, and long go up in byte. So one byte, two bytes, four bytes, eight bytes. These are holding normal integers, real numbers. So there's no decimals. If you try and put a decimal after them, it will break. After this, we then go to a float. Now, a float is only four bytes, so it's like an integer, but this allows you to store up to six to seven decimals, which is very helpful. So I can just call this float with a capital F. It's fine as long as it's not a keyword. And I can set this equal to 3.1415. And then you can see you add a little F at the end to say it's a float and it's all happy. Without that, it thinks you want to do a double because they both have sort of the same range. A double allows for more decimals, but it doesn't know which one you want right out of the gate. So you have to put that F there. And then a double, we can say just way longer way more decimals and then this one is eight bytes after this 
we have a boolean and this one is very straightforward it's either true or false and as you can see it's all happy now the nice thing about all this is you don't have to initialize them so if i want to just say bool2 i can just put a semicolon there it's not initialized it won't be true or false if you try and use it it will act as a false but the data hasn't been written there it will assume it's false because the it's empty and there's nothing there now the one after that is a character and this is a letter so this one you have to use just normal single quotes you can put like the letter H in there and it's all good you can't put a word it doesn't work it only has two bytes and that's all they can hold now the non primitive data type I was talking about in the beginning is a string and that's the one that I'll be going over in this one because it is fairly straightforward like this one. The only difference is this is a class. String bot equals hello. And then you can see right there, it doesn't light up because the string is a class, but it will work. Now, you should know that if you look right here, you can see character and this right here now you might not understand that right out of the get-go but basically what is happening here is this is storing this string and a whole bunch of characters linked together so if we said l1 then this would be hello then two three four five and basically to the computer this is what yours kind of looks like, but this is what we say. It allows you to know what you're writing a lot easier, and working with string has a lot of built-in functions that allow you to modify it instead of working with character arrays. And if we want to test if any of these are being built correctly, then we can say Bob, and see now the color changed, because it is being used now and there's no red squigglies so we know it's all working fine and then we can click the play button up here it's going to recompile and it's going to print Bob out to console now if you want to add something on top of Bob then you're going to use the plus sign and you can either add quotes and put something right away so cheeseburger and we can run this and it'll immediately attach it to the end now because there's no space at the end of hello and there's no space before cheeseburger you can see it's all one word so we'll want to add a space right there or at the end of there now we can also add a number directly in here so if we want to add large number then just like that it lights up because it's being used now and there's no errors and if we run this and it recompiles boom it automatically prints the number it turns it into a string so it can print nice and easy it's all good you can do the same with a boolean or a float or anything like that and it all works correctly right out of the gate now some small things I want to go over really quickly is just adding some stuff together. If you want to add two variables together, just know that it matters what the data types are. So let me go to like a short, new short, and then let's do small number plus medium number. Now, you can see that it's really upset right here, and if you hover over it, it will tell you why. It says the required type is a short and the provided is, is an int. And the reason it's saying that is because what's happening here is we're overflowing, so it's just immediately trying to cast it to the new type. If you are adding any two numbers, the best thing I'd say is just work with the same data type so just use only ints or shorts or anything like that or you can cast it 
We haven't gotten into that yet, but you can basically say, hey, this is no longer a byte, make this an integer. And then it'll turn that into an integer. And that is about it. If you want to set something to something else, then you can just go like that and say the name again. You don't have to say double in front of it. And if a name already exists, you can't use that name again. So if I do double, double, see, it doesn't work. And those are data types. They're pretty straightforward. You use them a lot more than you would think. Uh, they're mainly used inside classes, though, which this right here is a class you can see. And it's basically just like a folder. It, everything inside here can see itself. It can't always see what's outside. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.